Dennis, the 38-year-old bodybuilder, is regaining some of his courage in front of a mirror. In safe space, he looks at himself, waiting for the anxiety to go away until he can get back into the field of the unknown. In Dennis's instance, the latter is not what one would expect. When he makes his way out of the bathroom, we see that what frightens him is a date. Dennis struggles to keep eye contact, and it's clear how anxious and confused he is. The conversation is still going on, though, and we learn some more about him. Since bodybuilding doesn't pay much, he works as a security guard at the Danish Crown on the side. This information isn't very impressive for his date, so to Dennis's misfortune, the rest of the dinner expires in an awfully uncomfortable silence. The road back home is overflowing with nostalgic thoughts of the failed date. As he stealthily enters his house and starts ascending the stairs, a voice of a woman is heard. Dennis resides with his mother, Ingrid, and she seems to have been keeping herself awake till her son arrived. When the kind giant walks up to her, her figure speaks with harshness and authority. Dennis lies to her, saying that he was in the cinema with his friend Lars, but that isn't enough to calm Ingrid down. The woman seems to be overly controlling, and the contrast between her figure and character compared to her son's body and temper is almost comical to see. Dennis sits in silence when he gets back to his room. This is what his quiet, desperate life mainly consists of. The next morning, he prepares his breakfast and eats at the small dining table, when Ingrid walks and dressed like a queen. When both walk out of the house, we see that Dennis is dressed up in his suit too. Restless that something is wrong, Ingrid makes him check that he locked the door, and when the latter sits back into his car, both head off to celebrate some cheerful occasion. It turns out to be his uncle Ben's wedding. The bride is a young woman from Thailand, and there seem to be a set of differences between her and her future husband. They met in Thailand, and as the uncle says, the connection was abrupt and overwhelming. The faces of the family members aren't so excited, however. They clap along, of course, but Dennis seems to be the only one truly sharing the happiness of Bent. His face speaks of his thoughts. This is what he's been looking for such a long time, an unquestionable, strong bond, and the thought of a lovely future with a soulmate. When the bride and groom's dance get near to its end, Dennis dashes forward and picks his uncle up like a feather. His nephews take Ben's shoes off immediately, and as they all laugh, they cut a piece from the groom's sock. After this pleasant detour, Dennis's quiet existence seems louder. The next day at a gym, while working out together with Lars, the woman he's been on a date with in the first scene, walks by him. Dennis is pleasantly surprised. In this accidental event, he sees a glimpse of his fate and greets her, but the woman passes him by coldly at a quick pace. All he can think of is this little moment throughout the day. He feels as if a future filled with chilling loneliness is waiting cruelly for him. He visits his uncle then, the true face of the counter-argument to all of his fears. He clears his yard, and is given something that soothes his terrible apprehension. It is a tourist manual for Thailand. Bent found his love there quite easily, and if love is what Dennis desires too, he should pay that country a visit. It seems to be much easier to find a partner in Thailand than it is in Denmark. Later that day, Dennis searches lists of hotels and plans his trip anxiously. Hope fills his entire mind. Even so, the next morning at the gym, he walks up to the woman he was on a date with and tells her that their future date is cancelled. She's not his type anyway. The woman is okay with it, she didn't care about him from the very beginning. The rest of the workout goes cheerfully. Finally, Dennis allows himself to have some fun. This latter isn't such a pleasant concept for Ingrid, however. That night, Dennis tells her that he might go to Germany next week. A cascade of questions come pouring onto him then. And after he takes care of each and every one of them, going deeper into his lies, Ingrid stands up and walks away from the table. She wants his giant to always be by her side no matter what, and the prospect of him leaving for Germany for a competition is devastating to think of. She doesn't come out to have breakfast the next morning either. She seems to have started a long session of silent treatment. And so, this is why when Dennis packs up his things, it is in silence that he walks into Ingrid's room. The latter doesn't even want to say a proper goodbye to her son. Rejecting to even roll over and look into Dennis's eyes, she throws a dry farewell in his direction and resumes her silent treatment. Dennis heads to the airport then. This is the first time he has done anything like this. Even though he's already 38 years old, he has never traveled alone. The city of Padea is like a magic world to him, spouting out colorful concoctions that you're free to take home. The day is overcast when he gets there, and even from a taxi window, Dennis experiences a degree of variety and density he has never seen before. Smiling, he gets to his hotel, and the very first woman that smiles at him is the hotel receptionist. Dennis's mind is already overflowing with thoughts of a possible future relationship with this woman, but the latter asks him an unusual question. She's interested if he's going to pay for the girl he's going to bring tonight far away. Naturally, Dennis has nobody to bring tonight, so he says the thing that has been quietly bothering him throughout the duration of his entire life, he is alone. But not for long. Standing at the balcony, watching the city landscape, he feels as hopeful as ever. Bent told him to look for a man named Scott in Thailand and he finds him in the next scene. 
The shirtless man, Scott, is extremely surprised to see that a giant like Dennis could be related to the mouse-like Bent. Scott is the man that introduced the latter to his present wife. He introduces his own wife new to Dennis, and together with her, asks him about his preferences. He seems to manage a large group of girls, and Dennis can choose any one of them to be introduced to. Dennis has never been in a relationship, so he has no real preferences other than the age. He says shyly that he's 38, so he doesn't want to meet someone too young. Scott is confident he can find the perfect match for him. Dennis should come at 9 o'clock this evening, and he will surely see his future wife. The only thing is that, compared to him, she's just going to seem tiny. Dennis visits a tailor later that day, and after being clearly overcharged for a single jacket, he returns to his hotel room to call Ingrid. Her silence hasn't been broken yet, and Dennis is forced to leave a message. He hears a knock on his door then. The jacket from the tailor has arrived way too soon. In the next scene, he ventures into a hot tie night, wearing a blue jacket and shorts. From all sides, women call out to him, and at first he smiles along. Everybody seems to be excited about him, cheering him on his way. Finally, Dennis gets to Scott's place. He is seated at a table, around which some middle-aged people are gathered, talking to Thai women. Seeing this, Dennis feels a bit odd. He asks for diet cola and is given a bottle of beer. Feeling unsure about it, he drinks a little and watches as Scott makes his way over to the counter, where a girl wearing a violet dress is sitting. After a brief conversation with Scott that might as well contain an order, the girl comes over to Dennis and introduces herself as fat. She seems to be way younger than Dennis expected, and as she sits down and starts caressing him, Dennis begins to become uncomfortable. He speaks in short sentences, answering Fat's quick questions about what he does. Naturally, the girl chooses to obsess over Dennis's muscles. She brushes her hand against his biceps and chest, soothing his jacket and shirt inside. She even asks Dennis to show her his muscles, if not here, then later in his hotel room. Abashment, disappointment, and confusion are all whirling chaotically inside his head as all of this is happening. He finally goes to the bathroom, where Fat follows him to do something that will make him extremely uncomfortable. His hopes for Thailand are close to being shattered, but still, we see him making his way towards his hotel together with Ty in the next scene. She goes into the bathroom to take a shower first, and while she's in there, Dennis fails to sit down even for a moment. Anxiously, he holds onto his diet cola, waiting for the girl to come out. And once she does, she tells him something that finally breaks his hopes. She states her point, and Dennis realizes that the girl isn't really interested in him. This isn't a real date. He truly thought that this was something else, but because he was afraid to be ashamed, he didn't admit it. He seems to be petrified when Fat sits him down and reaches to open his trousers, but before she can do anything, Dennis asks her to just talk, but naturally, the conversation doesn't happen. Eventually, when she reaches towards his trousers again, Dennis jumps up from bed and asks her to go. A painful silence falls over him when she leaves. It is truly a low moment for Dennis. He tries to call his mother again that night, but fails to fall asleep. Dusk comes, then morning, and Dennis looks around the street, not knowing where to go. Finally, he finds a place he is most familiar with, a training gym. Upon entering, a woman behind the counter calls out to him to say hello. Dennis has a brief walk around and asks if he can work out there. This place accepts him warmly. Here, he feels at home. A young man helps him with the weights, then suddenly realizes he knows this foreign stranger. He asks Dennis to follow him, and from his drawers comes a catalog in which Dennis's pictures are placed. It is almost unreal to Dennis that someone from Thailand knows about him. This young man is the one who introduces him to the owner of this gym, the woman behind the counter, who said hi to Dennis when he first entered. Her name is Toy, and she is happy to welcome him. After working out with his new friend, Dennis is invited to go out with him that evening to meet some other nice people, but Dennis says he has to do something first. In the following scene, we see him sitting at Scott's place again. The latter comes up to him with another girl named Nuck. And as this girl tries to arouse him the exact same way Fat tried to do earlier, Dennis's torment is cut short by Scott, who goes up to the stage and announces the beginning of a magnificent show. And as Dennis takes a look around at the people enjoying the performance, he sees nothing but warm, pink cruelty, so he leaves the place completely. After a struggling stroll, he goes to the shore and ponders over what to do next. The prospect of going to the young friend he made friends with at the gym doesn't sound half bad, so he looks at the address he was given and makes his way there. A large friend group accepts him with open arms in the next scene. People here are respectful towards him. Toy is here too. She greets him wholeheartedly and compliments his suit. After what Dennis experienced in Thailand, he feels a bit alienated. Now, even sitting at this table full of friendly faces, he feels alone. Toy notices this quickly and decides to have a conversation with him. Now Dennis knows a lot more about her. It is true that Say owns a gym, but she's not into bodybuilding much. She took over the management of it after her husband passed five years ago. After Dennis shares his condolences, Toy gets interested in whether he has a wife back home and learns that he's single as well. Dennis says that he doesn't worry about it. He just hasn't met the right woman yet, and after Toy answers that he will surely find someone right for him, he smiles back at her. Perhaps he has already found what he was looking for, and it is here, right in front of him. 
They share a ride back to their homes, and while traveling with public transport, Toy asks him if he knows how to ride a motorcycle. We don't know if he truly does, but he nods immediately. The next morning, he struggles to start a rented bike while Toy waits around for him on the road. Finally, the manager there helps him out, and the two ride away into the roads of Pattaya. That afternoon, Toy introduces him to Thailand's true, rich culture. They visit bazaars and temples, and Dennis soon realizes that the true essence of this country has been hiding in its shell all along, waiting to be discovered. They go on a shore then, and here, Dennis tries to kiss her. Toy leans back. This is too early for her to do such a thing, and Dennis feels so ashamed of himself that he sits quietly, looking at his feet for a couple of seconds, while Toy tries to convince him that it's okay. Still, these words are not enough to soothe Dennis's anger towards himself, so he apologizes and walks away from the beach. Just like before, he struggles to start his bike, so by the time he is still trying, Toy manages to catch up to him. She offers to help him, and after a few unsuccessful tries, she concludes that the bike is done. They will have to ride back on one bike. Once they reach Dennis's hotel, he thanks Toy for the nice day and walks away. Everything in his movements and expressions screams in shame, but before he gets to the front entrance, Toy calls him back to let him know that kissing in public is largely frowned upon in Thailand. What she means by it is that it wasn't exactly kissing Dennis that she rejected, she rejected only kissing him in public. Dennis's expression changes abruptly, he was sure before that nobody could genuinely like him. But now he smiles at Toy with an open heart, realizing that it isn't true. Toy asks him if he's hungry, and together they make their way towards her apartment. It is a very small, quiet place. The picture of Toy's late husband is still hung on one of the walls. She asks him nicely if she should get on with making food now, and for the first time in his life, instead of rolling with everything the other person offers, he silently walks up to her and leans down to kiss her. After a few seconds, we see him soothing his anxiety in the bathroom again. Thoughts of fear and shame are raging in his mind as he struggles to even look himself in the eyes. When he enters Toy's bedroom in the next scene, the latter is already half undressed. She leads him to her bed and, after sitting down, tries to kiss him again. Dennis is rigid. Petrified from fear of intimacy, he leans back and, ashamed of his own anxiety, apologizes. He runs away then, feeling pity and immeasurable anger towards himself all at the same time, until at some point, he stops moving forward and pauses to make the right decision. It is true that for his entire night, he avoided intimacy. This is his only real chance of achieving such a thing with another person. Just like always, he's terrified of being ashamed and vulnerable in the face of another person. But for the first time in his life, he finally decides that it is worth fighting this urge to run away. He walks back to Toy's door, and as they quietly sit on the foot of her bed in the next scene, he admits that he really likes her. Toy responds that she likes him too, and that night they embrace each other warmly before going to sleep. This is the canon event in his life. The next morning, Dennis flies back to Denmark and enters his home. His mother smiles at him warmly and embraces him. The silent treatment seems to be over. They discuss how the imaginary competition went and have a cup of tea together before Dennis walks up to his room to unpack his bags. He takes out a piece of toy and looks at it for a while. The thoughts of her will never leave his mind. He has already chosen to change his life forever for her. We are assured of this in the next scene, as he's checking out his new apartment for Toy. He is ready to rent it and move away from his mother's house for good. The apartment has two large bedrooms, one of which can be split into two bedrooms for two children. That night, he goes down to his mother's room, to talk to her about what really happened when he was away. He repeats it several times to her, saying that he has something important to convey, and soon Ingrid sits up in her bed and tenses up in apprehension. Dennis tells her the whole truth, including the part in which he's dating Toy, and breaks the news to her. Ingrid doesn't take it well. Dennis apologizes for lying to her, but Ingrid doesn't want to discuss this matter at all. The next morning, Dennis goes down into the living room and finds his mother sitting upright at the table, waiting to begin having a harsh conversation about what was told to her last night. Ingrid is a true embodiment of the devouring mother. She's so obsessed with her relationship with her son that she uses her seemingly broken heart to manipulate him. Her authority over Dennis is immeasurable, and she uses rude and strong words like betrayal and sex tourists to further strengthen her case. Finally, she demands that he break up with her immediately, and even though we cheer for Dennis to go against his mother in this moment, he fails to withstand her authority. He agrees to sever his bond with Toy and apologizes to Ingrid. After working out later that day, he looks at himself in the mirror and realizes that he's a giant of a man. Why must he be afraid of that crooked woman? Toy comes to Denmark in the next scene, and he picks her up in the airport with a smile widely stretched over his face, and a nice set of flowers in his hands. He brings her to his new place then. The apartment is full of sun and neatly arranged furniture. He tells Toy that this is for only a short time. He will get a bigger house later. After the two sit on the sofa, Dennis remembers he has a small gift for her. 
He stands up to come bring it to her, and once he gets back, we see that it's a very simple necklace. Dennis is smiling like a happy child, but soon his gaze becomes serious as he ventures to do something unexpected. He tells Toy that his mother had to be put in the hospital yesterday. As he says, now she's okay and at home, but she needs somebody to stay with her. This is why he has to sleep there tonight. Toy thinks they are going to his mom's together, but as Dennis awkwardly responds, if his mother sees a stranger today, she might feel bad again. Toy agrees and nods her head, but she seems hurt. Clearly this is not what she expected. It is tough to see Dennis immersing himself in this two-faced lie. After the successful battle, Ingrid feels free to show some love to her son once he gets back. Ingrid is sure that her claws are so deeply bound into her child that the latter will never even try to go against her will again. The next day he goes to a mall with Toy, and to his terror, he sees Ingrid walking around in front of them. Reactively, he pushes Toy to enter a women's underwear store, and urges her to get something there. Unfortunately for him, he's too big to ever hide anywhere. When Ingrid walks past the store, she notices him and walks up to him to say hello. Anxiously, Dennis tells her that before going to the gym, he needs to pick something up. Naturally, he doesn't mention anything about Toy. He just hopes that the latter will be so immersed in choosing what to buy that she won't notice him talking to his mother. But soon, Toy comes up to them and says hello. Ingrid's expression changes immediately. Toy doesn't understand a word in Danish, so Dennis decides to use this to his advantage. He comes up with another lie, assuring Ingrid that this is Brent's wife's sister, visiting Denmark for the first time. For a moment, it all seems as if Dennis's solution has worked successfully, but after a set of awkward sentences, Toy decides to show some attentiveness and asks Ingrid how her health is. It is clear that in this moment, the latter understands everything. Dennis feels caught, having no idea what to do, he ushers Toy out of the store, says a rush goodbye to Ingrid, and steps along the floor of the mall at a very high pace as Ingrid comes after them, screaming harshly. It is awfully quiet in his car in the next scene. Toy is able to easily determine what is really going on, and Dennis has no words to convince her otherwise. He drops her off at the newly rented apartment and drives back to his house, knowing that an extremely harsh fight awaits him inside. He finds Ingrid in the kitchen, clasping a rug firmly in her hand. It looks as if she's hurt. And since she seems to have no intention to say what she did, Dennis starts walking around the house to lean on himself. His room is turned upside down when he enters it. For a while, he sits there silently, looking over at the desolation, until something clicks inside his head. He goes back to his mother and tells her that Toy is going nowhere. It is not in her business how long she will stay, or what kind of relationship they will have. He's moving out. Ingrid looks up to him in surprise. As always, she begins acting hurt, manipulating Dennis's emotions, but the latter won't be fooled by her anymore. Ingrid starts crying then, but there is nothing she can do to stop Dennis from moving out now. He packs up, and before finally heading out, he embraces Ingrid firmly. Perhaps he's even expecting her to gift him a kind, encouraging word for the road. But all Ingrid does is beg him to stay again. Dennis comes back to his car and drives away towards his new life with Toy. 